Hi there! In this video I want to explore if it's possible to hack our happiness or to alter our happiness with brain machine interfaces. So machines that are inside our brains between our neurons that could alter our happiness. I came to this question because a couple of months ago Elon Musk started a new company called Neuralink uh, that is specialized in brain machine interfaces and a couple of months after that Facebook had its uh, developers conference and they also told us about their brain machine interface project. So that made me really curious how far are we with brain machine interfaces and since we are researching digital happiness, me and my colleagues, I was wondering if you could use those devices to actually alter your own happiness. So let's find out. research reports I found was from the 1950s and it involved rats. They basically gave a rat the choice between some tasty food or to press a lever. Normal rats would choose the food of course, but these rats they had an electrode in their brain and every time they pressed the lever they would uh, get a shock or electric stimulation and they would feel pressurable feelings. So these rats really liked it and they, some of them pressed it more than 7000 times an hour and some of them kept pressing it until they collapsed from hunger and exhaustion. So this was basically the first brain machine interface that directly gave uh, organisms pleasurable feelings or happiness. That experiment was already 67 years ago. So what is the current state of brain machine interfaces? I want to show you three examples that are for me astonishing and that show you what we can already do. These are examples that are working. People have these brain machines interfaces in their head. So the first one is from Neil Harbison. He's a guy that was born um, colorblind. He saw the whole world in black and white. And in 2003 he gathered with a, a research team they developed a solution for his problem. It's like a bionic eye that sees colors. It's an uh, electronic eye. It's a color sensor that detects the color frequency in front of me and sends this frequency to a chip installed at the back of my head and I hear the color in front of me through the bone, through bone conduction. So for example, they have, if I have like This is the sound of purple. For example, this is the sound of grass. This is red. So the second brain machine interface I want to show you is about typing with your mind. It's, it's for people with ALS or people with locked in syndrome. And there are different teams all over the world working on this. Uh, the video I want to show you is from Facebook's uh, developers conference I talked earlier about. It's actually from a group within Facebook called Building 8. It's a group that is working on the most advanced, uh, advanced technology. And they are aiming eventually to have your thoughts um, directly translated to a Facebook update. So we finally can get to know all your brain farts. I can't wait for that to happen. So what if you could type directly from your brain? The woman in this video has ALS. She is completely trapped inside her body. She cannot move or speak, but she is typing with her mind, not with eye blanks, with her mind. An array of electrodes the size of a pea has been implanted where her brain would normally control her, mo her motor functions. The electrodes record her neurons firing when she imagines moving the cursor. Then the computer learns to move it for her. Using this system, she can type eight words per minute. She is typing at eight words per minute 
directly with her brain. Now that's less than one third the speed that you can type on a smartphone, but it is lightning fast compared to silence. And the third brain machine interface is maybe the most widely used. It's also called a brain pacemaker or deep brain stimulation. And it's used for Parkinson patients, for example. So it's almost an instantaneous reaction. I can't control this. shake some quality cocktails with the right, the left just looks like the royal wave. Um, my voice is gone it's, and I'm in quite a bit of discomfort and I'm about to drop the remote control which will be fun because I won't be able to turn myself back on. So I think party time is over. Um, Oh, almost automatically. The power comes back on. I'm steady. So on the short term, all these companies and all these researchers are aiming to help with diseases and brain disorders. Think about brain strokes, Parkinson, Jules de la Tourette. But on the long term, the goals are different. For Facebook, I already mentioned the direct translation from thoughts to text. Neuralink is aiming to merge artificial intelligence with humans in order to prevent an uh, artificial intelligence apocalypse or uh, to help us against the singularity. And of course, brain-machine interfaces will be used in the future in ways that we can't even imagine right now, especially since the brain or brains are quite mysterious for, for us at this moment. But the question that we started this exploration was, how can we use brain machine interfaces to hack our happiness? Neuroscientist Moran Surf foresees a healthy and happy future with brain machine interfaces. He says, consider eating a cake. It's basically the enjoyment of the cake is basically just some neurons firing away in your mind. They give you the, the sensation of taste and, and, and smell. So if you have advanced brain machine interfaces that could stimulate exactly those neurons that give you uh, the, the pleasurable feelings, then you can get the sensation of eating a cake without actually putting anything in your mouth. Mouth. So you get the, the, the pleasurable feelings, but you don't get the fats, you don't get the sugars and you can eat cake forever. And I think this is a good example to show you why it is so difficult to actually hack your happiness. Because if you're eating cake forever, then it gets really boring. We are really good at getting used to stuff. In psychology, this is called the hedonic treadmill. It basically means that um, if you go one step up the happiness ladder, you get used to it and it gets normal and it's the same the other way around. If you, if you find some difficulties in your life, uh, it may take a while before you bounce back, but eventually, eventually you will bounce back to your baseline of happiness. And to end today's exploration, I want to mention one uh, last research report. It's from Professor Kahneman uh, from 2002. And he researched the daily activities of people and how much those activities contributed to the happiness of those people. And it turns out that the cliches that my parents told me and my grandparents told me, and maybe yours as well, are actually true. It's a lot about uh, relationships. Intimate relations uh, were the number one contributor to the happiness of the people that were researched. And work dangled at the bottom between traffic to work and traffic back home. I wanted to share this research with you guys because Kahneman has a more practical approach to happiness than the brain machine interfaces. And with this list, we come to an end of this video. So this was my first vlog, my first vlog, my first video. I hope you liked it. Um, I'm really curious to your thoughts, your brain thoughts, your ideas. Maybe you, you have a subject you want me to explore. 
let me know in the comments or contact me in another way. Um, don't forget to hit the buttons, the likes, the subscribe. And I wish you a good day and hope to see you soon. Bye.